What is up everyone? So last episode you guys saw that we fitted up the FC with the kit, the wheels, the gando, everything. It looks incredible. If you didn't watch the last video, we just spoiled it, but this is the fruits of our labor here. It is perfect looking FC. Different when you walk in today? It hit different this morning. It always does. The next day when you walk in, it just it hit. So this is Operation Get My Life Back in Check, as you guys remember me saying yesterday because I've been gone a lot this year. I've done a lot of traveling this year, which has kind of put our builds a little bit all over the place. Kind of planned, kind of not, and now we're trying to solidify some builds before the end of the year, since I'll be back for quite a while. So the next thing on the list is going to be the 34, that thing up there. You guys saw we imported this, it was like something that I was looking forward to for a very, very long time. Car showed up, rotted towers, we replaced almost all the metal on the front end, so the, the front end's new. Now we have something special to put in it, right? We've had all this build up, we're not just gonna throw an RB25 in it. We have this. Our RB30, RB26 head, RB30 bottom, it's a three liter RB26. You can't beat it. Thing looks beautiful, it's gonna sound incredible, it's gonna make good power. Now we gotta get this damn engine in the car. Now that the chassis is ready, the engine's almost ready. We've gotta put everything together that we need to now, slip it in the car, and hopefully by the end of this video, this thing will be in there. Do you think the red's gonna clash? Yes. Yes, come on. I'm being totally honest. But, I mean, they could surprise us all. But like, I think it's gonna hit. From here, I think the, the, gold, road, the orangey gold would have hit, and then the gray would have. Whatever, hit. we could always repowder coat. I only, I only have, you know, a week's wage of powder coat on there. A I like it. Wage. <laughs> I like the red. The red and the silver goes good. I think red over my hit. Not a red. Whatever. That's a problem good. for us to find out later. A couple things we have to do before we get this off the stands and in a car. And the first thing is going to be a new oil pan. Just like many engines from the 90s, the Arby's don't have a good baffling system in the oil pan, right? So at high acceleration, high cornering, sideways, any type of fun driving, you get oil starvation at the higher RPMs, it's bad. Probably even worse than you've realized. So getting a upgraded, we'll say upgraded oil pan is very important, something that has proper baffling inside of it. So we make sure oil is always getting sucked up to the pickup, pickup tube, right? Factory pan, it's kind of just, this like bubble that just holds oil. There's not really much to it, right? But when I was in Australia, my buddy Johnny from New Zealand brought me a Kiwi special right here. Who does the Arby's better than the Kiwis? I don't think anyone. And so this is from Dab Fab. He's in New Zealand. He makes these pans. They're tested to true. They're really, really cool. So obviously it's a modded OEM pan. So it has nice OEM fit, but he adds this extra bit right here. Not only does it hold more oil, but there is baffling on the inside to make sure oil stays where it needs to be. And I also like how he integrates the OEM kind of windage tray right here. So we kind of get the best of both worlds, right? On top of that, he gives us some extra drains on the side of the pan for a head drain or the catch can drain if we want to put it into the pan itself. Good, good work, good welds. Dab, dab, right here. Put the Instagram on the, we'll put the Instagram here. Get it, because he's a fab guy, dabbing welds. Like, uh, that's I gotta got be it. Works. <laughs> it works. I got it. I got it like that. Right, let's get this thing on there. This is it a bad idea? This might be a bad idea. <laughs> Look how big this thing is. Get up. Was it bad? Get up there. Get up there. <laughs> okay. Cool cut. Yeah, that's it. I wasn't a K-Series fan back then. Guard in his eye, bro. Yeah. K-Series open with a drop on your face? Yeah. Five, doing five, the same five. thing you're doing. Oh, just under drops the on your face? Oh, oh underneath. Oh, there it is. We're looking for moistness. Oh, that's good. Oh, that's good. Oh, that was good. It's good. And just been sitting for a long time. So of course, this was a pre-built engine. I bought this pre-built and it sat for like four or five years, just kind of sealed up. And what you don't want to see is it being dry, right? Still very, very, still very wet in the inside, which is good. There's no corrosion. Everything's nice and happy. Don't gotta worry about it, especially on the iron blocks. You could get corrosion within the cylinder walls. It's not good. We saw it through the top and the top was fine. We put a boroscope in the cylinders. It was fine. And the seat underneath, happy, healthy, and wet. You feel a little better? It makes me feel a lot better. That's a lot of RTV. Yeah, but it's oddly satisfying. Block is clean and degreased. Fresh slate. So is the pan. Now I'm gonna do my good old fashioned smearing of Honda on. I'm a smearer, I don't know about you. Twin, you're a smearer, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah. But you put gloves on. He goes in raw with the smear. He said, yeah, but you put gloves on. <laughs> That's a lot of hot upon. <laughs> I'm not playing <laughs> games with this. It makes the whole engine look so much nicer too. 
You got a lot of money in these engines. You want to make sure they're properly oiled. If you look at the factory pan here, it's pretty crazy actually. I'm pretty sure all RVs like share the same oil pan besides the all, all wheel drive oil pan, right? But if you look inside, there is zero baffling, right? We have like the little windage tray here, but there is nothing to prevent the oil from like sloshing around and being away from the pickup tube, which is just in the center, right? Pickup tube's in the center. You're taking a big, say you're coming into a big left-hand turn, you're on the brakes or something, the oil is just gonna go here, right? Away from the pickup tube, oil starvation, everything sucks. Baffle, extra oil, protect your engine. So now that the oil pan is on, the engine should be good enough to actually get this thing in the car. But before we do that, of course, we have to get the transmission on. And before the transmission, Steve, what comes first? Thrall bearing. <laughs> what well, before that? Oh, uh, clutch. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. See? Throw a bearing. <laughs> clutch, <laughs> clutch. All right, so I almost lost my mind because I always forget these damn things. The engine, the trans plate right here. You see this little plate? It's kind of like a spacer and a dust shield between the engine and the trans. And it's the piece that you always forget to install once you already put your clutch on. So you cut them in half and then like, <laughs> we've all done it. So this thing, not only does it prevent it from, you know, it, it acts as a dust shield within the transmission. If you don't run this, you're gonna have issue with the depth of the way your input shafts and gauges into the pilot bearing and into the clutch. So you have to run this stupid thing. I still wanna do something with it. This is a RB25 NA Neo. Yeah, you learned when you were in Australia that they turbo these. Yeah, Jason from Keep It Reet, he had all RB Neo NAT cars and they ripped. They're making like 500 stock bottom end. Why the hell do we just like keep this engine? <laughs> See, take the firewall off. Locks. Is this sitting on it? Yeah. Nice. <sighs> Here we go. This almost really halted my day. But you see, you have to put it on before the flywheel. Some cars you don't. So <laughs> I always forget to put them on. You, you cut out a little chunk and then slip them on. <laughs> I should be right. I'm, I'm pretty sure all RBs have the same bell housing bolt location, which is literally four. You see that? One, two, three, four. And then there's a bracket that bolts on the bottom, but still. Oh, also, I didn't mention before, a big thing on the RBs is a head drain, right? The oiling system on the RV isn't the best thing ever. And so oil will actually start to like sit in the head and it won't get to the bottom end fast enough. And you have a lot of blow by, it's a pain in the ass, right? You saw we did the upgraded baffles on the inside, but to get more oil out of the head, to get oil out of the head quicker, there's a big hole in the back of the head, right? This kit by Nitto, it bolts to the head. You just gotta drill and tap these two holes, which I did this morning. And now we have two places to allow the oil to come out of the head, which we can run to the oil pan. Dab fab right here. Dun, dun, dun. Cause I always get a million comments. You gotta do the head drain, go do the head drain. Yes, you definitely do the head drain. Okay. <laughs> Next piece of the puzzle, the clutch. So what I went with, XD twin disc. Boom. This one's rated for like 600 foot pounds of torque which sounds like a lot, but it might not be enough. I didn't want to go triple disc. I really didn't want to go triple. So I really like the feel of the XD clutches with the twin disc. So guess what? I went with it. And it's nice because it is balanced. So what's the difference between a twin disc and a single disc clutch, right? So it's exactly what it sounds like. There is two clutch discs in the inside. So, right? so we have our, we'll call this our friction surface here. Just like a pressure plate, right? But then we have one clutch disc. Then we have another friction surface, and then a second clutch disc, right? So now you have two clutch discs worth the surface area of clamping force. Boom. Take this thing. It just looks like a fancy flywheel. If it spins, lock tight it, right? That's what I always say. Clean all your seat. Look at it. Clean all your surfaces, no matter how clean it looks. So one, if you look, See that blue mark on there? We're gonna align it with the blue mark on here because everything is balanced to that mark, which is good. Second one. Next surface. And then the final piece of the puzzle. Just like that. Don't let a twin disc intimidate you because it's just as easy as installing a single disc clutch. Just a couple extra steps. So before I start to hand snug these, I always make sure the alignment tool is dead center because it, it'll still kind of come in and out if it's sagging a little bit because the weight of the clutch just always want to make it fall. So if you can like visibly center it, it makes life a lot easier when you go to install the transmission. And then if it's off the slightest bit, it's such a pain in the ass to align the input shaft to the transmission 
well, into the pilot bearing, into the clutch disc, especially with the twin disc, because you have to get through two clutch discs and then the pilot bearing. And if you did it right, oh, that's that a, was that good. was a good. <laughs> it sucks that it doesn't do that. You know, when you just get like a, that, that haunt. <laughs> now it's time to mirror our transmission. Now, what transmission did we go with? A couple different trans you could use, right? There's a small box and a big box, right? So the small box would be like the RB20 trans, which shares the same guts as the KA trans and the SR trans. Obviously, that would stand no chance. It would literally shit its guts out, leaving the starting line with the engine, right? So <laughs> <laughs> then Nissan has a big box, which is shared between the Z32 and the RB25 DET, right? This thing right here. So they're obviously not the end all be all transmission, but they are a hell of a lot stronger than the small box transmission. And they're a real track transmission, right? This should do us pretty good since we're not gonna be, you know, throwing semis on there and going down this, this strip, so. Of course, got a new throttle bearing on it. We grease it all up, got everything cleaned and lubed. And so now we can marry the transmission to the engine. You ready? Holy matrimony. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, oh, okay. 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 Yeah, hold the engine for me. No way. No way. No way. Fake news. It's never that easy. That's how we do it. That's it. It's a good day. That's a good day. <laughs> Free line that damn thing. Every time, baby. Light work. Light. <laughs> No, it's like a lottery. Like sometimes we'll be fighting for hours, other times just slip away. Right. That's the drivetrain. That's good to see. Now we gotta figure out what the heck mounts I gotta use. <laughs> we got a bin of mounts over there. We got the suspension ready, mock it up under the car, and then it's time to get this thing slipped in the 34 and hopefully never has to come back out. <laughs> Oh, that's exciting, dude. That is super cool to see. All right, chassis is ready for its new drivetrain, bare bones. I'm so excited to see this thing actually in there, but before we do that, we got a couple more pieces. The engine came with a bunch of different types of engine brackets. I don't know which ones actually go with the engine to the chassis, but what we do know is we have an RB25 that came out of the car with brackets, so I think we could use those. These things are ugly. Whatever. Oh, thank God for specialty tools. <laughs> I've been so happy. Woo. We got engine brackets, they're a little crusty, so just a little bit of good as new. And luckily they fit. We'll see how these things hold up to the power. <laughs> when it comes to the trans mount, Nissan has like three or four, I believe. So they have A, B, and C. They might have a D, I don't know 100%, but basically like every rear wheel drive Nissan from the 90s uses a configuration of one of these three or four brackets, right? I don't know if it's an A, B, or C, but I know what it looks like. I'm pretty sure it shares the same trans mount as an automatic S chassis. If you look at this, right? See how one side kicks up and one side kicks down mm -hmm. and see how it, it will kick back on both sides. So it's a variation of which one's higher, which one's lower, and which direction it points, if that makes sense. That's one. We need this, but we need this dent to be forward. Needle in a haystack. This one looks good. Nope. Manual. So it looks like I have a bunch of just the manual S chassis ones, which I think is G's letter. I should say the letter like up here. Right there. See how it says B on it? Might, might be hard to sell. Yeah, you can see it. Okay, it's the same. This one's kind of a lot of these things. These are all gonna be the same. Why do I have so many bees? This is it. This is the one. Which one, what number is, what letter is this? A. A. Right there. There it is, A. That's what you need for the 34, for the big box rear wheel drive. A. What the hell is C for? Let me know. <laughs> <laughs> then a quick little refresh. Let's get it on. You mount first. Hopefully this is actually the right mount. <laughs> We're gonna find out. All right, so now that we have the brackets on the engine, we need the piece that actually goes on the chassis that attaches the engine to the chassis, right? The subframe. We usually put the engines into the top, but since it's such a big engine, it would be a nightmare. So we're gonna put it in through the bottom, right? So what we have to do is we have to attach the 
So subframe the suspension to the engine and then lift it into the chassis as one and then bolt it to the engine. The suspension really needs a refresh. The car was crusty, which means the suspension was crusty. So for now, we're gonna take the subframe out as by itself and put that on the engine and just use that to hold it into the car. Not bad, right? Time to attach a subframe to the engine. Well, that's good. <laughs> Hell yeah. I'm curious how this thing's gonna fit in the engine bay, right? Because it's an RB30, so it has a taller deck height. I think it's this much. It's literally that much taller. That's a lot taller. The, the hood should fit. I couldn't confirm with anyone about if it'll fit or not, but we'll make it fit. I've seen RB30s and S chassis before, and you look at it and you're like, I know something's not right. <laughs> we'll see how it looks inside the 34. I don't think I've ever seen an RB30 in person. Yeah, I haven't. I, I didn't until I went to New Zealand and saw Guy's car, so. And that car looks all sorts of messed up. No, I'm, kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding, I love you so much. <laughs> Now's the tricky part about lining this whole thing up. So usually I use a plumb bob. You guys probably know what a plumb bob is. Austin put a picture right here. And I'll usually plumb from the holes of the subframe to the ground and it works really, really well. But we can't find the damn plumb bob, so we're just gonna eyeball it. That does not look stable. Oh. How are you looking? It's pretty stable. I'm moving it. That feels sketchy. God, it's mint. Good. See? It's a little sketchy. You probably got it on the oil pan a little better, but it's good. All right, now we're, now we're in the deep end, boys. Right. I'm going to go wherever with the back. You leave. Yeah, yeah. Let's bring it down a little bit. For... See, this is where a table jack is sick. This was my compromise with a table jack. <laughs> yeah, we'll figure that out. I'm not too worried about it. Get your get your ass uh, to your left. Yeah, right there. Let me know what I need to. Uh, someone yelled. Yeah, the red doesn't look that bad. It doesn't look as crazy. It doesn't look as crazy. Oh, yeah, let me take the little engine bracket. Yep. Red or dead, baby. This is where the plumb bob's nice. There's no guessing. You just drop it and you're in there. All right, you're in that back hole. Yeah. Well, can you kick it to your left a little bit? Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Cool. So if this wasn't tilted like this, it would work really well. So note to self, wedge something between the subframe and the engine next time. It ain't dumb if it works. Oh yeah, that works beautifully. You like that? So we talked about the engine being really tall, right? Having an issue with clearing on the hood. So PRP actually makes these spacers that go between the subframe and the rail to lower the entire engine. Was that probably seven mils? I guess that's just enough to make everything fit. So if it has to do with an RB, PRP definitely makes it, right? So. These will go between the subframe and the chassis. So I don't have to take it out fully, just slip it in, make sure it's centered, and then there are a couple of other things. See, that's not bad. You don't, I don't mind you, it. Don't, you don't say it with confidence, though. It's not bad. <laughs> no, no, no. Once we dress it up with all the silver components, she'll be all right. She'll be all right. I think, you know, whatever. Yeah, it's not On horrible. camera, it probably looks yeah. like a match is better. Yeah. See? Yeah, it's good. It's yeah, great. It's not horrible. It looks yeah, it, does, it doesn't stand out as much as I thought it would. What does stand out is how goddamn tall this thing sits. <laughs> that looks right out, man. thing's a dog. <laughs> it's a dog. That's a big ass inch. Yeah, they are. Oh, God, that feels good to be like to see them in there. They are robust. Let's Cheers. make sure this fits. <laughs> Can't it reverse rotation because of that? Yeah, exactly. Say that again three times. Revert, reverse, reverse rotation, reverse rotation because of that. Reverse rotation because we're at. Oh, it was made for it. Who would have thought? <laughs> Still want to get a bigger turbo? Or are you gonna rock? Yeah. It so we have a G3770. It's honestly way too small for this engine. I don't even know why I got like. They're very similar in sizing, so we're gonna use mock-up for this for now until I want to so suck up makes. the money and overpay for uh, overpriced Garrett. Mm. I would just say what it makes. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not opposed to it either because it's D-band, so we could change the turbo out in like an hour. Ooh, for the sake of science.
Well, now it is game on for the million and a half other things it takes to make an engine run, right? Right? You put it in, you're like, oh, you're almost there. This one you put on Facebook Marketplace, and you're like, just needs a tune. That <laughs> just needs a just tune. Just needs a tune in a starter. We have a lot to go. Um, we have a lot to still talk about. And pretty similar recipe to the rest. You guys have seen it a million times. The stuff is easy. It's just time to spend a lot of money, right? I'm excited for it because this is where this is where like the fun part is because this is where everything is instant gratification, right? You spend so much time prepping all the parts the engine, getting everything cleaned up, getting everything new, getting it together. Now it's hanging over this bay for the next couple weeks, throwing stuff on it as we get it, and hopefully hear it run sooner than later because the best thing about this thing is gonna be the noise. We all know it. If RBs can do one thing, it's sound good. I'm gonna stand here for another two hours and bask, bask in its beautifulness. I love red cars. We haven't built enough red cars. I need more red cars. <laughs> For now, I'm excited. It's been a long time coming, and it's finally time to make progress. And Operation Get My Life Back on Track. It's smooth sailing right now. Full swing. It's full swing. I mean, look at the freaking FC. Freaking 8.6 is in paint right now. What is this, dude? Whatever. You guys know the deal. Like, comment, subscribe. Stay tuned for more content. We'll see you guys very shortly. It's sad because I